Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Callum and I'm a software tester. If you haven't seen me before, my channel is about software testing and this is actually the second video in a short series I'll be doing on practical software testing. That brings me to this window right here, which is the Jira software uh, dashboard, which you can see that I'm on. Jira is a well-known software that's used within technology companies the defect management and the creation and tracking of bugs. Today we're specifically going to be looking at an app within Jira which is called Zephyr Scale. Now Zephyr Scale is specifically for test management and we're going to be going over the execution and structure of test cases. Moving back to the Jira software I think it's quickly worth mentioning the titles um, that we have here which is in progress development, QA test and done. So it's going to vary depending on the team that you're working in, the company you're working in, they all have different ways of doing this, but effectively the process will look something like this. The in progress development column means that developers coding and implementing the features or the stories that you have here. And once it goes into the QA test column, they would probably move that. It just means that is ready for software testers like myself to go ahead and test against. We're now gonna move each one of these. We're only gonna to focus today on the tasks. Don't worry about the story here for now. That kind of just covers all of these, these tasks here. We're gonna add each of these tasks in the blue to the QA test column as they're now ready for test. So if we now go up to the apps and Zephyr Scale that I talked about earlier, again, this is just one of the many apps that are out there, but you know, it kind of stays the same. You'll have each of your test cases here. If we go into one of them, create a single to do, and we go on the actual steps, you'll see that I've written various steps to go ahead and execute and test against. These are obviously just examples and quite simplified ones, but the theory is the same. So looking now at the to-do list management website, we've got our test cases on the right here and the website that we'll be testing is on the left. Now hitting this first test case at the top here within our test cycle, users should be able to access to-do list website. Okay, so scroll down and this one only has one step here. It says navigate to this URL and then the expected result root to do list web pages displayed. Now, whenever you hear the word root in a technical context, it just means the base of something. It just means the first folder or the first uh, directory. Um, and we refer to that as the root. So we've navigated to that page and the to do list web page is indeed displaying. So we can now change that from not executed to ticking it. And so now that test has passed, it will remain green on the left hand side there. We'll go to our next one, which is create a single to do. Uh, the objective there, create a to do list that sits on the root of the web page. Noticing that kind of same terminology there again. This has a few more steps in it, it looks like. So again, navigate to the URL where page is displayed. Well, yes. So we'll go to the second test step and that is tidy my room. So we'll type that in, tidy my room. And the expected result tidy my room has been typed into the text input field. Well, hey, hey, that was not a difficult step at all. We'll give that a big tick as well. And okay, well, you can see that kind of actually executed it as I clicked off the web page. I probably should have known that. Um, but the last one was to hit enter and a new to do tidy my room has been added to the main page which you can now see under evil tester which i think just came with the website i did not uh <laughs> don't be an evil tester cool so so far these are all passing this is really good um we're going to have one look at the next one creating a sub to-do list so for this create a new to-do list from the root page and then create a subtask so let's look at the steps again it's the same steps. Now, what you'll notice about all these test cases is that they're very small adjustments. They're very granular in their changes. And that's to ensure that anyone who's picking up these tests, it may not be you in the future, maybe other testers on your team or even developers can go in and execute these without having too much knowledge. And it should be very simplistic for, for the person to execute. So yeah, we'll give that a tick. Red page is displayed. Uh, we'll add a new to do by typing in the text input field and here we've actually got some test data uh, which is a string test management so we'll go ahead and type that in we'll 
tick these off at the same time because as you can tell once I click back off of it it will just actually add it without needing to hit enter um, but there we go test management and we'll give that a tick we'll pretend we've hit enter that has also been done uh, with the expected result a new to do task is created on the main web page so next step now click on the to do list you've just made test management let's let's go and do that okay so it looks like we're now we've got the header test management so we're inside that looks good we're now going to add a subtask by typing in in the text input field and again we've got some more test data what we should be entering in as our test data it's just a string create the test cases create the test cases maybe I've got some more work to do and this is to remind me to do that we'll now hit pass on that obviously we've hit enter so now I want to make a note at this point that it's really important that as a software tester you're looking for slightly more complex uh, tests to do so with this last test case we're gonna see something a bit interesting and we're gonna try and see and work out whether it's what we expected it to do entry of malicious data is the title of our last test case the objective make sure that we don't accept malicious data and that malicious data is handled in a safe way obviously we've navigated to this we can tick that off no problem go to the to-do list test management um, so let's go in there that's brilliant we'll tick that off there okay so change of plan we're just going to enter in this script on the main to-do list management page don't worry about it being a, not being sorry a subtask uh, we'll just enter it in here um, malicious content malicious script is what the test data says and we'll just hit enter and as you can see we've got a bit of a weird result the final step says yeah expected result script code is recognized and not added as a subtask don't worry about the it being a subtask just that it shouldn't be added. As you can see, we added it and in between Evil Tester and Tidy My Room, we now have these weird looking tasks. So here we're gonna have to like mark this as failed because unfortunately this was not the expected result. It actually added something very weird. I imagine that this website is doing some sort of input sanitization of its own and that's how it's kind of safely handling it. But for us in our use case here, we actually didn't want anything to be added at all. But not all your tests are gonna pass. You should be designing test cases, if you're a good tester, that not only pass, but fail as well. So that was the example. Now I hope this video has been useful and has proven a few things. We're gonna go over in the next video, more general sprint and agile methodologies within testing. We're gonna take a step back and just look at the overall general process that a team will go through and how QA slots into that. This was a practical guide on executing test cases and doing a test run, test cycles. But in the future, yeah, we'll be looking at kind of agile ways of working and also we'll go in more depth on how to create a good test case. But for now, wherever you are, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.